They say beans are the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more, well, you get the idea. Well, we're all familiar with the run of the mill kidney, garbanzo, and green beans, but have you ever heard of the purple bean? If you haven't, don't worry. I hadn't either until I was perusing the seeds, gearing up to plant my garden. When I saw them, it was love at first sight. And now I'm going to show Paul and all of you that they aren't just pretty, but also delicious. So what you're saying is that it won't be just love at first sight, but also love at first bite. Yes, 100%. Ah. Okay, so these are from my garden. Mm -hmm. They are a purple dragon tongue pod bean, actually. And so what I'm going to have you do nice. is start cutting them open. But take one there. Now, show us how it's green on the inside. Yep, it is it's green, green on, on the inside. inside. Here, cut that one in half. Okay, give... There right you go. There. Let's see right there. And then, before we even start the cooking process, I thought it would be fun if we tasted a raw one. You can tell me what you think. Because one of the ingredients, one of the things that makes this purple makes it a little sweeter, maybe. I, I love a raw bean. What do you think? I think it tastes like a raw bean. <laughs> I think it's delicious. I've been picking them out of my garden and eating them all week. Okay, the other thing I want you to do before you get all the way in it yep. is cut one more bean. Cut the ends off for me. Sure. Now, what happens with these beans, I'm going to take this, okay. I'm putting them in vinegar, and this one in vinegar here, I'm going to soak it in vinegar. So it's an anthocyanin is the water, and keep cutting, so you got to start making oh, those. Oh, you bet. Yeah, you have work to do. Okay. The anthocyanin is the water-soluble pigment that actually makes these beans purple. It's also hmm. similar to like a, a purple carrot, um, some purple cabbages all have that same thing. Now, there's a lot of purple um, vegetables like eggplant or a beet that are completely different reasons why, but for this, it's an anthocyanin, and that's going to actually destruct like really quickly in any kind of heat. So they turn green when you cook them. But the internet said that potentially if you put them in an acid, like lemon juice or vinegar first, you might be able to retain some of the oh, really? purple properties. So I just have one in here, and we're gonna cook them all together and see if we get this one half of a bean out. Cool. And what do you think, science experiment time? Yes, it is. Oh, wait, so the Almost other thing, like the vol volcano, but a little different, almost, right? <laughs> but with your food. The other interesting thing about this, things that you're growing in your garden that have this um, pigment in them, mm -hmm. is that it can change from year to year, and it's primarily based on the pH in your soil. Kind of like you might be familiar with hydrangeas. You can kind of change the color of your hydrangeas. So the more acidic your soil, the redder it's going to be, and the more, um, on the other side of the pH scale, you're going to have yellow. And so this purple falls in a more acidic range. Yeah, we've grown these. Yeah, we've grown these purple beans before, and you you wonder when you grow them, it's like, is it going to taste the same? Well, yeah, pretty much. It it's does green, pretty much taste the same. Yeah. But it's a little bit more fun. Yeah. Now, another option you could do if you really want to retain some of the purple color would be to ferment them instead of cook them. So to make pickled beans or something like that. Oh yeah. That would be an option. Okay, so we're about ready to put these in. What we're going to do today is we're just going to kind of blanch the beans. We're going to put them in boiling water for two to four minutes, and then we're going to take them out. We would normally put them in an ice bath to cool them rapidly, but I plan to eat them immediately. What do you think? All right. Okay, so I'm going to put these it. in right here, and let's take the one vinegar one out. This one's cut in half, so we should be able to find it if it works. I'm not sure. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to set a timer. We are going to go. So this was just a plain white vinegar bath that yeah. you were seeing and if it retained the color, right? I think that's what I just, I just want to see. Now, I lemon juice might have been tastier. If you, like, if you wanted to soak it in like a lemon juice and maybe put it in a lemon pasta with some beans, that might be a little bit better than a vinegar. But I figured with just one bean, it was going to be okay. Yeah. Okay, so you say you've grown. Oh, they are already turning green. They are. Like right before my eyes. I don't know if, if you I, can see that. I'm not sure. Can I? Tip that enough? Mm, I'm going to spill it. Here, maybe. I know. I'll get one out. Look at this. Green already. That happens remarkably fast. It does. Um, so also when you start these to grow, they have the, the, purple, the purple in them kind of comes out in different ways. And I've, I've been sharing my garden along the way with people. And the first thing that happens is they flower. And those flowers are the first part of the purple mm -hmm. that you see. And then the beans have some green in them when they start coming out, and as they mature, they get more and more purple as that chemical or pigment kind of evolves. It's very interesting, don't you think? Yeah, it, you know, it would be nice just for the raw bean to have as a garnish around your plate to, yeah. as, you know, as decor, so. 
I really like the flavor of just the raw bean. I mean, mm -hmm. I've really been enjoying them as a snack. Now, I'm also growing celery, and I've been picking that right out. And just oh, yeah. peanut yeah. butter late night snack, you know, it's per pretty much perfect. <laughs> I'm not um, a celery person, but what? I know people that love it, what? so yeah. A friend of mine did her entire garden one year with a purple theme, so she had purple beans, purple tomatoes, purple carrots, everything was oh, purple. Yeah. Kind of fun, yeah. right? I'm going to get some plates ready for us. We're going to eat them just blanched a little al dente mm. because I really like it that way. And I did bring a special treat, though, some black lava salt from Iceland. Oh, wow. It gives it a little bit yeah. of an extra spice. And then we're just going to do pepper, salt, and some oil. You could also, you know, obviously one of my favorite dishes is just blanched um, beans in a Mediterranean like tomato sauce. That's kind of my favorite. How about you? Uh, my wife likes to do was to steam the beans first and then uh, put it in the pan with some olive oil and put some mozzarella cheese in there and maybe some peppers mm -hmm. and onions and spice it up and really uh, make it a, a fancy dish. Okay, our half, so. our half bean... Yeah, it retained, it retained a little, just a sliver a of, bit the of the purple, color. but it did not, in fact, stay purple. Okay, I'm going to get you a couple of these out to try. Awesome. You could definitely cook them a little longer. How do you, do you like them a little bit more cooked? Sometimes you just blanch and then saute it or something, but we'll just give it a little, we'll give it a little try here while some more cooks. Okay. Well, that was a little bit much there, but. So how many bean plants did you, did you have a, like a eight foot row or 12 foot row? Oh, or you long? haven't seen my trellis? No, I, I haven't seen the trellis. I did an entire trellis. trellis. Oh, I covered you? it in Christmas lights. It's the magical entry to my oh, garden. Wow. It's amazing. And I filled it with beans, and they're almost all wow. the way over the trellis now. Can you believe it? Cool. I wanted it to be the entry to my magical wonderland. A little bit of this salt. I like salt. I really like this <laughs> Icelandic salt. Yes. I got some also uh, lava salt in Maui to see if it was any different than the Icelandic version. I haven't been able to test it yet. What do you think? It's got a good crunch, and I like the salt and pepper on there. And just, the olive oil. I think it's a great snack. We can cook them a little bit more. Um, we could also just dump the water out right now and saute mm -hmm. it with some oil and pepper and kind of like finish that cooking process. You could also, I thought about getting that panini press out. We've been doing this waffle segment. Oh, yeah. I thought, you know what? We might even be able to try that. Well, we have lots of beans in our garden, so now I know what to do. <laughs> just put a little salt and pepper on there with some olive oil. Perfect. Have it as a snack. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, hopefully you have a garden at home and you can use the commercial to go grab some beans and have a snack. We'll be right back after this.